All right, what's up guys? So this week we're going into solving differential equations numerically. I have Euler's method, which is I guess a very beginner introductory method that usually students get introduced to in their math courses. I have RK4, which is the method I've pretty much seen used throughout the academic world. And then we have this differential equations library, which is one of the Julia packages that also does all this stuff. If that all sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe links to the my code and the differential equations library will be in the description and let's get into this so here you can see we have euler's method this f function is the the de we're passing this alpha is the initial condition a and b are bounds for the function and then n is the number of steps we want to take now when we're solving it out i have this n1 which is number of steps so that's the number of solutions we'll be getting and this plus one is because we're also inputting that initial condition so that's that first first set of values and now this u is just going to be a matrix made up of two columns one column is the the time series or the independent series and then the other column is all the solutions that we get as we're iterating through this h is that step size that's dependent upon the bounds and the end size or the yeah the n size and then this is me inputting the initial condition in the very first row of that matrix now here we have this for loop and this is the actual euler's method part so you can see i have u of i but it's dependent upon i minus one so that previous value so that's why in the very beginning i'm inputting the solution because this i minus one First depends on the first initial condition and then it goes off of that so it takes that initial condition it does a step size step <laughs> and then it uh, also inputs that initial condition into the your your differential equation and solves it out and that's what gets inputted in the next part it also inputs what that step size is into the matrix and then it does another step and so on and so forth so then it'll always depend on the previous value and once it's all done it returns that u and that's euler's method now for rk4 it is designed pretty much exactly the same as euler's method and you can see the start off looks pretty much the same but where it's different is in the for loop now in here we have this t and this w which is the same idea where it's the previous value. So this t is the previous t point or time point, independent point, whichever. And this w is that previous solution. Now this k1, k2, k3, k4 is where the difference comes in. And we're plugging in those points into these different k's. And we're also like this h is being half by two and is being added to the t point. This w is getting added with this previous k1 point and this is where the rk4 method comes in so you can kind of see it's doing these halves so it's these midpoints within your step and then we're combining all that together and this is our our next actual step and it does this throughout the for loop until it solves out and then we get returned now that is pretty much rk4 and this isn't the most efficient way to do it but this is probably the clearest way where you can see how the entire function works in the function we're just inputting all the constants and all the values it solves it out inputs it into the matrix and moves on all right so let's say we have this this one ode function now this is y minus t squared plus one and then this f of t i have defined in the line below is the exact solution now when you're doing de's you don't always have the exact solution but it's nice for this case because we can see how accurate our methods are. This u naught is the initial condition. A and B are our bounds. And it's the number of steps we want to take. And this t ln is for the f of t function so we can evaluate it across. Now solution one and solution two is me using Euler's method. I'm in plugging the, the functions and the bounds and the conditions and everything. This DE library part is now where I'm using the, the function or the library added above the differential equations. Now you can see here DF is being redefined with three parameters and I'm also calling it U and T. 
Now, I'm only calling it you here because in the documentation, if you look in the website, they call it you as well. So I just wanted to be consistent with it. But this you is the same exact as my y in my previous function. T is the same exact thing. You can see it's still t squared here. This p is for their parameters. In our case, we don't have any parameters, but it needs to be placed here. So the od problem knows how to interface with the function. t span is how they define their bounds. So rather than doing A and B, they take in a tuple of zero to two. But now this part, this line 70, OD problem, we input our function, our initial condition, our T-span, and then that's what outputs our differential equation. And then when we call solve on that problem, it solves it out and gives us our solutions. And that's pretty much what it is for using a DE library. It's, it's fairly simple. And now down here, I'm just plotting everything out. So this is the exact solution right here is this is the DE library and you can see solution three. I'm actually using this dot syntax where I'm calling T and calling you. Now down here, solution two and solution one is the Euler and RK4 method. And because how I return values, it's one big matrix, I have to slice through it. And this first column is all the T values. And the second column is all the solution values. And then we plot everything out and let's see how everything looks. All right, so you can see, like I was saying before, Euler's method isn't the best. It falls off pretty quickly. The exact solution, we can't actually see it because it's being covered up by RK4 and the library, but they're pretty much right on it. Uh, Euler's method falls off. But Euler's method is nice because it's fairly simple and you can see how these numerical methods work and you can see the step and all that. And when you get to more complex methods, they're pretty much just using Euler's method and building upon it where it's inaccurate. Now this is for solving a one order system, a one function system, one function. <laughs> now let's say we wanted to solve out a whole system. So in this case, two functions. Now for a system ODE, I'm not going to be using Euler's and RK4, mainly because I don't have them defined to take in full systems of DEs. I actually do have an RK4 system version that's in the repository if you want to see it, but I'm mainly going to focus on the DE library now. But the process is still pretty similar, where I have this function, it's DF, and you can see this time I have four parameters. Now UPT are what they were last time. U is the input vector, the solution vector, whatever you want to call it. P is parameters if you need them. T is the time series or the independent values. Now DU is the solutions to that, that U vector that you input. So it's the solutions coming out. Now solving out this DF system is pretty similar to before where we just put it into ODE problem. The main difference is our U naught is a vector now, and the size of it is dependent upon how large your system is. So I have two, two equations in here. So that means I need two values, input all that into ODE problem, input that into solve, and then I get my solution again. Now also I'm plotting it a little bit differently here. And you can see I have plot, the solution, and then I'm just labeling it. Plotting library can interpret that object and it will plot out what we what we want from it. Okay, so since we have a system of equations and we have two system or two equations this time, we have two curves. Now one is for x and one is for y. So we can see our x, it goes up and it comes back down a little bit, and our y just goes up. And all this is being compared to our time series. So it's going from zero to one, which is our bounds. And these are all the values. All right, so let's say we wanted to plot out our X versus Y now, and we're following the same exact syntax, but we're including this vars is equal to one comma two. Now this is to interact with the solution object where one is the X column and two is the Y column. And that will output those values for for the plot all right so here's our plot and you can see it follows the, the the values that we had before right we had x going up and down when we look at the time series and now x here is going up and then it goes back and then y was only going up and that's what we see with our y values it's just going up so we get this this cool little curve and that is pretty much it for 
plotting or for solving out ODEs. Solving out a single function is fairly simple, whether you want to use a library or code up your own method. And if you want to use the library for solving full systems, you can also do that. If you wanted to code up your own method for solving systems of equations, it pretty much follows the same exact syntax that you see here. Just all these t's and w's or u i minus one comma one, these are all vectors now. That's what you just have to keep track of is the, the vector math going on, but it's the same idea. Okay, I think I'm done babbling now. That's what I have for you this week. If you like what I've been doing so far, please give this video a like and subscribe. The Twitter and IG links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have any requests for what libraries you want me to cover in the future, please send them my way and I'll see you guys next week.